Hello everyone, today we're going to be showing you all the tips and tricks for how to beat every quest in Rec Room. If you find these tips helpful and you want to show your support in Rec Room, simply click on my profile in game and hit that support button or enter code Terra in your watch. If you need further instructions or information on any of the things we're about to show you in these quest run throughs, be sure to leave us a comment down below and we'll get right back to you. Now let's get started with the first quest. Which weapons would you advise that people grab in Golden Trophy if they want to win? The obvious choice would be bow and arrow. If they could learn how to double shot, then they'll be golden as long as they keep practicing. I always use two swords. Two swords isn't bad either, I would say. It's a little fun, but in terms of like speed, I would say bow and arrow for sure. The first level, there's nothing really to say about it. You only have this spawn, this set of goblins, and then the later set down there. They're easy to take out. Just those two. You could stand on these little boxes if you really needed to. They can't reach you while you're up here. Just like that guy. Then for this level, there'll be some flyers over here. And then after you kill these two and move on, there'll be four more that spawn up ahead, but one of them will spawn right here behind you, so you have to make sure to not forget about him. And the pots. You can grab pots while double shooting. It's annoying. Just got these two. And then for this part, to make it easier, you can spawn the enemies and then just bring them back over here instead of having to deal with all the craziness inside. It makes it makes things a bit easier, for sure. And the flyers, they only aim at your face. We got these two goblins back here. Take those out. Oh. Gotta get some shots of me being a Gucci gamer. You know, I help. <laughs> so for this level, you can probably see the big boulder right here. I don't know if anyone really uses it, because I know I don't. But you can just push this bad boy down and it'll one-shot everything. Or you can just run with it. That works too. You'll get spawns down there, and after you take those guys out, you'll get three more flyers in the back over here. I can handle those ones. And it's just all straightforward from here. Just deal with the goblins as they come. <laughs> if you smash the pots, you get a higher chance of getting S rank. Right? Yeah, but in Golden Trophy, it's like impossible to not get S rank, I would say. Alright. As long as you don't die like 20 times. And for this one, the two hallways on either side, if you walk too far into either of them, It'll spawn two extra goblins on top of what you already have to deal with. So I try not to spawn them and I just stay in the middle. Then for the barrels, neat little trick with the barrels, you can kill them with a pot. <gasps> I'm just like doing so this <laughs> You can also kill the barrels with your enthusiasm, with your swords. <laughs> Yes, you can scream at them and intimidate them. Insert battle cry. Now for this one, if you don't want to deal with the left side, you can go to the right side and you don't want to have to kill stuff on the left side. I've always been told, stick to the right. And this guy wants to say hello. And so does this one. Don't they know we're in the middle of explaining how to kill them more efficiently? For this part, you can always just run back if you want. Or if you have a bow and arrow. <laughs> I don't think we're getting us rank. You can knock. You can knock them down. <laughs> so maybe I should be getting all the pots I can. <laughs> Make like Link and destroy all the pots. This is the reason why we take the right side. So we can go up to here. Shoot some arrows. If I can... Oh, oh, there. I hear the goblins. And for this part, you can spawn. Spawn the red goblins, and then run away. Okay. And then you can make them all come to you. I messed up earlier. I didn't get all the goblins. To remedy that, you can just creep up this side right here. 
and then just shoot an arrow, get their attention. And that's the level complete. As long as you don't trigger the other goblins. If you have a bow and arrow, you can just stand on a bookshelf and just kill everything. Kill the flyers first, of course, because they can still shoot at you. But once they're done, you can just kill everything else because they can't reach you. I should probably take my own advice. I have to get or a few not. shots of me being <laughs> somewhat good at the game. <laughs> so it doesn't look like I'm filming you soloing <laughs> this. And for this level, you can trigger them and you can just like stand right up there. You can deal with the flyers, they're just green ones, so they're not too difficult. <laughs> I say all these little tutorial helpful hints and tricks. <laughs> yeah, we don't do any of those. <laughs> we just jump down and kill things. Well, I mean, <laughs> if you've played it 500 times, then you can afford to break the rules. For this part, a red goblin can... There's a chance a red goblin will spawn behind us. For this guy... I like to duck into Pops. this little, like, hallway here. And then I wait for him to go by, yeah, and then I strat. hit him in the back. Yeah, I used to do that too. Yeah. Now I just bring the pot, because when you hit him with the pot, it stuns him for like two seconds. And I just shoot arrows until they die. Dang, <laughs> look at you go. And for that level, I just recommend <laughs> enthusiasm and blind luck. This level is also a bit chaotic. For my advice, if you really want to take it low and slow, you can always just run back into here. When the barrels show up, you'd want to take those out as soon as possible, obviously. But I would want to go for any red flyer you see. If you have a bow and arrow, shoot them once and then deal with a barrel or something because they'll get stunned and fall to the ground. If they're flying over the lava, you can just shoot them with an arrow and then those fall into the lava and die. Let's do it then. For the rest of it, you just gotta rely on some skill. Woo. One thing I was gonna say that helped me get better at quests, especially because I use swords, it does matter how hard you hit them. IRL. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think so too. When I first started, I was like, eh, you... eh. But now I'm just like... <laughs> and then for the boss level, a very popular strategy. It it works. Some people don't like to to do it for whatever reason. You can have a single double shielder. When they get up to the boss, the boss will only focus on them so that you can have someone with a bow and arrow or a crossbow just on the side hitting them in the back. Yeah, and the person... As we'll demonstrate. The person with two shields has to also not just go up to them randomly with two shields. You have to kind of block yourself while also kind of making a motion like clockwise yeah. or counterclockwise. Like hitting him. Yes. Like hitting him a little bit. Kind of hitting him and doing this as we will demonstrate. And that's how you win Golden Trophy. This looks like Golden Trophy, but it's Crimson Cauldron. The way you can tell the difference is the boomsticks, the wands over there. Ah, yes. Do you recommend the these? weapons? I do I not. would never use these in my life. That's just asking for friendly fire to happen. Yes, I'll stick with my swords. Right behind this little stereo system right here, you can grab a potion of double damage and obviously boost all your damage and you can use this to speed run through the first level which I will attempt to show. Um, the thing about Crimson too is that you always want to utilize the potion. It gives you double damage yeah. so drink them where possible. Especially if they're like soloing the quest. They feel the need to like save it for later and they just never use it. The double damage potion also hits 
through shields. Well, I guess hitting them normally deals damage to them too. But for the barrels, you can shoot them wherever and they'll still take damage. Second level tips. The one thing I can probably say about the second level is that you can always just spawn them and then run back. So for this part, you can literally spawn whatever you want over here. It can't cross these trees right here. There's like an invisible wall and even the flyers won't get over it and they'll just all sit there and wait for you to kill them. I always run into the house and I drink a potion really quick here. That's my mad strat. Drink up! And then what I like to do is go back into the cabin, drink another potion because there's going to be another round of enemies. And this part is interesting because there's going to be multiple spawn points. They will spawn, if you run to the left here, they will spawn around that corner, but then they will also be spawning in this corridor here. Don't run ahead of your teammates because there's so many more spawn points. Just handle the ones that are in that room and then slowly move forward. And don't try to revive people that are dead in a horde of goblins because then you'll just die yourself. I'm the worst for that. Most of the time. But also don't try to not revive. <laughs> so often, someone will get down and they just ignore it. They're like, oh, someone else will get them, whatever. And also, before you know it, you're the last person yeah. and everything is on your shoulders. And that's impossible because there's so many enemies spawned. Smashing pots in crimson is important. That will help you to S rank. Yes. Or a better rank in general. Lead you to success. I don't think there's much to say about this part of the level except make sure your teammates are still alive and that you're not running too far ahead. Or for this part of the level, I should say, there's two different spawn points. Where'd you go? Uh, I'm up here. There's two different spawn points in this spot right here. When you pass right here, it spawns goblins on either side of this little room or this little area. But if you walk towards the tree in this area, it'll spawn goblins behind you and flyers as well. Also, there's yes. three or four and goblins that spawn up on that platform there. So you either need a bow and arrow to take them out or to run up alongside and then jump over if you have swords. I like swords on this part. I feel like it's better than having a bow and arrow. Uh, is it on? Oh, oh, geez. Boop. So, obviously there's a thing right now where the goblins, they can sometimes spawn aggroed and they'll just chase you at the beginning of the level. Otherwise you wait for, there's a horn that goes off and then more spawn right here. And then it's just chaos. If you kill goblins that shoot projectiles before the projectile hits you, it won't kill you most of the time. There's also potions in the middle of this one at the campfire and it's good to drink those oh. before the initial <laughs> spawn. Behold the potions. Good idea to drink those during this level. They will help you out a lot. You can just see I'm slicing through the goblins like butter with the double potion. There's also barrels you can shoot up here that'll kill everything around them too, if you hit them. But you have to be careful too when you're with those barrels in crimson because if you even hit them with your sword, it'll disarm you and send your weapon flying. We're trying to do the intro to this level of bad goblins. All right. Then, so obviously to take them now, you can smack those orbs back with a sword, a potion, or a pot. And that's the only way to take them out. Alright, so next part of the level. We got two cannon guys to deal with. Yes. Which is unfortunate because I don't have a bow. Yeah, but there's a crossbow right here. The Rec Room uh, Universe gross. provides you with everything that you need. There might be more spawns up here. Yes, there absolutely are. I'm down. I'm not down anymore. Okay, sorry. I should focus. Oh, I, I have my camera out. <laughs> I almost saved you. This guy was right behind you. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, you saved me. You were mentioning these goblins that spawn back here. They don't spawn until you reach towards the end of the stairs down here. So a lot of people tend to forget, especially if you're used to running ahead and you probably never deal with these goblins. I would imagine you don't even know they exist. And for this part, nothing spawns until you hit right here. So there's a barrel that can spawn up ahead on the way to the next area. Sometimes he's there, most of the time he's probably not. I don't know what the chances are, but sometimes he has a chance of showing up. <laughs> oh, there's the barrel guy. There he is. For the next part, if you have a bow and arrow, you can shoot that barrel next to that cannon goblin over there, and it'll just kill him because he's within range. And then for the two up here, the little barricade that's up there with them, your arrows won't go through them. 
but their cannons will go right through it, so you have to be careful about that, because they'll still hit you regardless, even if you can't hit them. The rest of the level is kind of chaotic and the spawns are all over the place. Let's demonstrate either what to do or what not to do, depending on how this goes. Take care of the guys up here first. I don't know how to get that guy without a bow and arrow, actually. You can climb up there and oh. get him that way. I didn't know you could. The next part is where things <laughs> yeah. get a little hairy if you just have swords. So bounce around like a bunny with your bow and arrow or your wand so that the goblins don't get you. If you find that your weapons aren't working, drop it and pick it back up, because that might mean your weapon is glitched for whatever reason. Rec room nuances. This part is definitely made for people that have a bow and arrow. Now, if you are new to Crimson, you might not realize how to get over this part. You don't need to use these stupid things, because they're hard to use and hard to throw. Um, you could just climb up the rock right here, just yeah. spam the jump button, and then you then can, can jump all the way over. Here and then jump up. Just make sure you don't short the jump. <laughs> and then you have a lot of pots to smash on this side, which is very satisfying. You will want to grab one of these to throw right in between here. I see I'm so bad at throwing those. <laughs> it's okay. There. Get it. there also, also, possibly can't fall. if one of your teammates does not make it over and you have to go back and save them, then you can just throw one of those in between so that you can make it back. So for this next part, as soon as you reach the other side on that little bridge area over there, it'll spawn a cannon dude immediately next to you and then three flyers behind you to the side of you, like as soon as you get over there. So you have to deal with those. What I like to do as yes. someone who does use swords is I wait for everything to spawn. Then I go to the far end of this level in the corner there and I'll take out all of the purple orb which ones and all the other flyers that I can take out from there. I will yeah. not as a sword person stand in the middle of all of this chaos. It's just not worth it. So let the person as with the bow and arrow woman, take care of it. Yes. yes. And then if you ever get overwhelmed, you can always just trail back here because the ground goblins can't chase you obviously. And then the flyers, they're going to be over there so you can just easily step to the side and dodge them. So I'll just run to the very end here. Usually get myself into trouble but not always. Get back here. You're gonna get a mixture at this point of the ones that have the purple orbs and just regular flyers that are trying to kill you. So I try to take care of these ones first while keeping an eye on everything else. Nobody said crimson was easy. Peripheral is key. And be looking around, don't just be looking at one thing. Okay, so bog monster yes, tips. Oh. oh yeah, there's a bow right here. All the ranged people, this is like, this is all ranged only. I mean, there is a chance you can jump on top of the bog and hit him with swords, but you're just gonna die either way. Provide you some bows over here. There's some wands up there that you can use. There's a wand and crossbow in the beginning of this level you can use. And then there's double damage potions that you can use to make this go a lot easier and a lot quicker. For the tentacles, they basically act as cannon goblins. So they'll shoot where you were, not where you're going. So if you're at the edge of wherever it is you're shooting them from, all you have to do is just move to the side and they won't get you. Unless you're like right in front of them, then they'll get you. So to trigger the bog monster, all you gotta do is step on this. Oh. Because you think you killed everything. Oh, stepping you, on the platform triggers the him? I didn't know that. Like, Climbing up there is usually a good tactic for people. So for the mine levels, there's <laughs> something that a lot of people call the fog, poison gas, whatever you want to call it. Basically, watch where you're so, walking. Yes. So if you take a closer look at it, you'll notice that it's coming out of the pipes. So I like to think of it as like steam, like steam leaking from the pipes because we're in the mines. Yeah, now. but that wouldn't like kill you. So I call it poison gas. A prop goblin wouldn't kill you in real life either. Fair point. So most people make the mistake in these levels of running ahead and not looking for where the steam is coming out from, but that's crucial because you will yep. die immediately. For this part, there's barrels that you can shoot to kill them. Kill these guys first. Ooh. And don't mind me disarming myself like five times. I like to drink a potion then hop down and I usually get friendly fired, but it's just so satisfying to kill everything. Double potions against the barrel guys. Very effective. 
There's also a poison gas here, so watch out for that. This first part, this first part of this quest, or this level I mean, as you can probably hear, there's a ton of steam pipes or mist or poison gas or whatever you want to call it. And it might seem random at first, but once you stop and take a look at where the steam is happening, you'll know where to avoid it and when. And then once you get past that point, there's going to be a ton of red enemies, a red barrel and some red goblins up ahead. And there's a barrel that you can shoot. It's easier with a wand because it's basically like a shotgun. But if you shoot it with a bow and arrow, then it'll just kill all the enemies up there and you won't have to worry about them. So this steam, it only comes this way, so you can just go around it. Or you can go through it. And for this part, I prefer this side. Going through that side is difficult. This side, you only have to worry about this pipe, which goes on both sides. And then there's a barrel. Well, I missed it the first time, but I got it the second time. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it makes it a, a whole lot easier to take these guys out. Because otherwise you have to run back into that probably, and that's not a good time. So what would your main tips for this one be? So for the first half of this level, well, after this point, there's a lot of barrels down there that you can stand on top of. And no flyers spawn until you take out the barrel that's on the far end. So you can deal with the first barrel, you can deal with the barrel that's just chilling over there next to the explosive barrel. You can take all those guys out just sitting on top of those barrels. And as you can see, there's barrels everywhere. Where'd my potion go? And then, let me just... There will be barrel guys right You'll away too. That... You'll notice that what? <laughs> what? It's too chaotic to explain say, things. You'll notice that they can't hit you while you're up here, so you can just... Hang out. Oh yeah, that's true. For you, with the bow, that is very true. And use the barrels to your advantage. Nothing else is going to spawn back here after this. So might as well use them while you can. I always shoot the barrel when the red flyers come out, because it makes it things a whole lot easier. My way of explaining things makes it sound like I just stand here and wait for you to clear the room. Then I wait for him to clear <laughs> this part of the room. And then I move forward. And then I take two steps <laughs> forward. So this is how you beat Crimson. Just bring someone along who's really good at it, and then you don't have to worry. There's this corner here that I was talking about. Don't stand here. Don't ever stand there. Bad things happen over there. Even if you have swords, you can honestly get a couple of the goblins, even if they're flyers. This is why you don't stand in that corner. There's like constant enemies coming out, including like three barrel guys at once, and then all these guys. Oh. It's very rare to have like a hero moment there. Mainly it just ends in death. Having a score of like around 250 or higher means that you have a chance of getting S rank. 260 or higher means you pretty much will get S rank unless you just die like five or six times by the time you get to the boss, which I hope doesn't happen. For this level, I feel like the most important thing is to have one person go up the stairs and one person stay down. And I mean, if there's a whole team of people, then have a couple of people stay down, a couple of people go up because there's gonna be spawns down here for a bit and then the spawns are going to be on the stairs for the most part but lower down and higher up so that's why it's good to have people be kind of spread out on this level as you can see and then all you have to do is climb up yep. that's all the enemies for this level yay for the boss if you have two swords, you can do it with one sword too, but I enjoy it with two swords. If you're close enough to the boss, you can just flail your your swords right in front of them, and it'll act like it's hitting the orb over and over again, so it'll just take them out right then and there. And then if you have teammates doing the same thing, it'll glitch out once per teammate, I'm pretty sure. So if they're all, all three of you are flinging your swords at the boss, it'll act like it got hit three times because all three of you guys kind of like glitched it out a little bit. But for most normal people, just focus on the back and forth of this. And when the enemies yes, spawn... It's three hits. It's three hits, but when the enemies spawn, I feel like our focus now is not the enemies, but rather the witch goblin. I like this corner personally, because I have good peripheral and nothing can really get me. Obviously the enemies are gonna still come up the stairs and stuff, so have good peripheral and make sure you're watching that purple orb and getting enemies as they come towards you. But don't go like rogue and start running around trying to kill everything in the room. That's what I used to do and it's not the fastest or most efficient way of doing things. <laughs> Th 
Thanks, Broski. Of course. Oh, I mean, we almost got S rank, but considering I was almost. filming and explaining and stopping every five seconds, I think A rank is still pretty good. When starting out with the Jumbotron quest, if you don't glitch any weapons in, you'll have the option of the AR or the pistol. If you can glitch weapons in, you can glitch in either the shotgun or the railgun, whichever you prefer. I, I prefer the shotgun because it deals a lot more damage. If you can't, I would recommend the pistol because it deals more damage per bullet. You can spin it in the air to reload it and it stuns all kinds of mob types, even the elite bots, if you didn't know that. The AR is just a steady stream of bullets that'll friendly fire everyone in your lobby, even if you are careful because those bullets, they travel for quite a long time. <laughs> Yeah, I would just not recommend the AR. Also, to glitch in the <laughs> weapon, you would put the gun that you want on your back in the lobby, wait until the game starts. Yeah, for, for me, the timer, as soon as it hits zero, I wait like half a second after it hits zero, and then I put it on my back. So tips so, for the first level. My main tips would be to hide behind all the cover that you see over here, because with these flyer bots, they do aim at your head, but they'll randomly shoot behind, in front, above, or below you. So you can choose to dodge in a certain direction, and that bullet happens to travel in that direction. So you can always opt to hide behind stuff until you hear that third bullet like get fired, because then they wait a few seconds, and then they shoot again. They will track your head to the cover, and they'll shoot at where they last saw you. So if you go out somewhere else, they'll have to retarget and uh, to shoot you again. This is complicated stuff. Okay, my tips for the first level would be stay next to your teammates. Don't die. My Yeah, my tips are always very rudimentary. <laughs> like, if you're not good at it, just stick next to everyone else and you'll be fine. Also, headshots do double damage, if you didn't know that. Headshots to the bots, or headshots to the friendly fire? Yes, you shoot... <laughs> <laughs> no. Because no. I'm like, do that bots do... have heads? The, the, the flying you, ones are all just face. <laughs> they don't have bodies, so it's yeah, not... If you... If you shoot the screens, the red the red and purple screens, it deals double damage. Helpful tips for the second level. As soon as you crawl all the way up there past those little barricades, they'll spawn their ground bots. And then what you can do is you can stay in the back over here and just shoot at them. And try not to shoot your teammates in the process. If they start to move up forward, then just stop shooting and wait to see where they're going before you start killing things again. But it's better just stay back here when you're initially wiping out this first wave of enemies. All you need to know about Jumbotron in one sentence. Stop friendly firing your teammates. So... For here, obviously, just sitting back. Chillax and... Well... I might go up a little farther. Now there's gonna be my spots, I think. Yes, for this part, as soon as you pass this barricade, right here it spawns the mice bots and then as soon as you walk past this part right here this open doorway it'll spawn the flyers voila the flyers and more mice bots from that direction in case nobody knows about it there's a shotgun hiding on this little box right here that you can pick up and when it comes to the mice bots you can actually jump up here is a good spot to hide from them the best thing to do with mice bots is to just find high ground because they'll still explode and give you points for it but they won't deal damage to you but if you're a little farther down like this sometimes they'll crawl over each other and be just high enough to explode and kill you then for this part my route i like to go on the right side because the two spawn on the right and then i can circle around there's also barrels in this jump. level that you could strategically shoot to kill but a bunch of enemies yes. or you can hide in them i've heard <laughs> yes if you hide in them you won't take damage i don't know if that applies for my spots as well because i've never done it myself but i know if they try to shoot at you it'll hit the barrel instead and obviously it won't damage you for this part i like to just take high ground and stay on the crates because there's more mice spots in this one too. The mice Level. spots spawn from over there in that corner and they also come from that direction. Yes, after you take out first wave of flyers, they will spawn from this little vent over here. And then once you take out the ground bots, they'll spawn from this little vent over here. On this part, avoid the lasers. 
<laughs> yes, and if you didn't know, you can help out your teammates by blocking off the lasers with your weapons. My strategy for this part is always to grab a few grenades and just start hurling them. Yes, throwing grenades. Very effective. Obviously, just like any other part of any of the levels in this quest, you can spawn them and just run back. There's always stuff to hide behind. I feel like half the battle is just memorizing the spawn points, really. So I see you have two shotguns. Well, thank you for noticing. <laughs> you can dual wield shotguns, and to reload them, you throw one in the air, reload the other, and then catch it on the way back. And obviously, when you're first starting out, you might throw the gun a little high and then catch it. But as you get used to it, you can do it a lot faster and kill more stuff a lot quicker. So for this, these ground bots will spawn first. And then don't walk too far into the level because otherwise it will spawn a wave of flyers behind you. And that's not what you want. So for this level, since it can get chaotic, you just trigger the initial spawns which will trigger everything else. And you can run and hide back in this room behind these little barricades and stuff and just let them come to you. I just remembered another Jumbotron tip that helped me when I was new. And that's to not just stand in one spot. It's not like other quests where you can kind of just take yes. your time. The bots will find you. So you always want to keep moving just left to right and dodging their bullets. So for this level, this is where you'll first find the assassin bots. The thing about those guys, and you'll see it later, is that they're pretty much tanks. They're like a Wobbuffet from Pokemon. They have the big body that takes all the hits, and you have to hit the little electrical icon in the back to actually do damage to them. ARs and pistols will take a long time to kill them, whereas if you dual wield shotguns or railguns, they'll just take them out like nothing. If your teammates have all the shotguns, I'll show you where to find some more. Yes. There There's is one in this level. here on the sledge, and then if you go into this armory here, there's some more weapons to help you out. Target acquired. <laughs> then there's going to be mice spots that spawn from over here. The mice spots will spawn from either of these three hallways. Well, they always spawn, but to spawn them, you have to walk into the hallway like so. If you don't like the shotgun, at least use it in this level. That's my motto. And I can show a helpful tr trick for this one as well. You can kill them in one go if you shoot me already, target me. After they shoot, they'll be stunned for a few seconds. There's numerous strategies yes, for this level. So the safest strategy, just like the previous three levels, you can trigger the spawns and then hide in this room back here because you have these little shields and deflectors. And then for this level, to spawn en enemies, you'll have to push the button in the spaceship to tr trigger the cutscene and everything. When you're on a team, people can be in the spaceship and people can be on the mat at the end of the level. I don't know who our tutorial is directed at. Is it directed at like the one person who gets in a public lobby and they're trying to figure out how to beat it? Or is it for like four people who are trying to actually beat this together? I have no idea. A little bit of column A, a little bit of column it's, B. It's for each individual to get better at the game. True. <laughs> Including me because I'm learning so much as I'm even talking about this and breaking down the level. Me too. You haven't learned a thing. <laughs> All you've learned is that I'm really bad at this and that I won't let the, the love for my AR die. So this level you cannot hear your teammates, so what you have to do is have a sense of teamwork. Someone with a shotgun should take out those guys right away, but everyone always rushes ahead here and more will actually spawn right here, so don't go too far because you gotta take out a few more. The other thing is you won't necessarily hear people getting downed in this level, so you have to visually look to make sure your teammates aren't down. You may not hear the sound, you might just be too caught up and you might miss it. Things are okay on this first part here, but on the second part there will be a lot of purple bots that spawn. And anyone who knows what those are knows that they're a real pain. Oh yes, if you need more weapons, there are some shotguns in there. So for this next part here, the purple bots will come out and you really want to be strategic with your use of the barrels. Like that. 
Yeah, we'll get rid of them almost right away. And then another wave of enemies will spawn. And there you go. Easy peasy. Alright, so you just walk forward, you see the light shine, hide in the back. You just deal with the elite flyers. I honestly find the elite flyers a lot easier to deal with than the regular ones. Do you shoot the barrels in this level? And if so, when? I do. I save so so I save the barrel that's over here for the elite bots and stuff like that. When you walk past around like this barricade over here, it'll trigger the first wave. It'll spawn one elite bot. But if you walk farther and get to the ramp down there, it'll spawn two elite bots. So sometimes if you're with like a good group or you're confident enough, you can trigger both of those spawns run back, wait for them to hit this barrel, and you can shoot the barrel and it'll wipe them all out. I could try to demonstrate it. We can see how that works. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. Then you just shoot that barrel. Yeah, that one shots everything. Makes life a whole lot easier. That is very efficient, yes. And for this part, I like to save this barrel for that purple flyer. That purple guy there is always a nuisance. And that one in my spot always gets stuck. Bless his heart. It's so true, if you wait till, there's, till they shoot, then they get a little bit stunned, and then you can shoot them in the back. So for this level, what you want to do is you can run past these little barricades right here to trigger the first wave of flyers, and there'll be two elite purple flyers among them. What you can do is that you can hide back here. This is a really good safe spot. Like, pretty much most of the levels in Jumbotron, you can hide in the back and get away with it. As long as you hit them. If you keep missing, obviously you'll get hit eventually. You can glitch into the wall here and conceal yourself as with the boss level, but it's not recommended because glitches are against the rules, and if you use them, you could be banned, so. Yes, quick disclaimer. The main takeaway is don't run ahead and don't friendly fire your teammates and always revive them as quick as you can. This level and the next part is just extremely version of yeah, that do true. not run ahead stay back there's also the barrels i never know yes. when to shoot the oh, barrels yeah. in this level because i know they can so make your life these easier. barrels i save that middle group of barrels for the three elite ground bots that spawn later the barrels to the left i save for the flyers and the barrels on the right sometimes the assassin bot spawns there so i just shoot it and it just insta kills it this is why it's also good to tag team and stay close to another teammate in this part because you get down so easily here that i feel like it's a good strategy and i feel like having one person run ahead spawn the enemies and run back is another good strategy for this part to spawn this next group you have to walk right here For this part of the level, there's an initial many rounds of my spots, so it's best to find high ground and encourage your teammates to yes, do the yes, same. Yes, yes, yes. And then, if you're feeling uncomfortable with this next part, you can always spawn it and then run back over here and then just wait for them to come through this hallway, which yes. we're gonna do because we're uncomfortable with this next part. <laughs> okay, so I'll trigger them and then run back. No. This part, you just wait for him to come to you. I'm still scared. Next one, I'll spawn the next one too. Then I will be on high ground. Just when you think the mice bots are over with, there will be more. They always spawn more. Alright, I got some of them. This is... There's always like one lost mice bot. Just get him. And then for the yeah. next part, there's gonna there's be a lot one, of assassin bots. So, good time to get your shotgun out. You can use the barrels strategically as well. Watch this, watch this. Because right. you have these two barrels. So... Oh, well, he wasn't close enough. Whoops. Either way, it, it will it will help to use the barrels. For the boss, divide and conquer the screens is your best strategy. If two people yes. uh, go to opposite ends, one behind the crate on the left side and one behind the plastic shield thing on the other side, then usually yes. you can take out the screens. Don't so much worry about the enemies, just try and get the screens first. Right. And Jimbotron's the only boss that will trail you when he's shooting at you. So if you're running in a direction, he'll shoot in front of you. So you have to run, stop, dodge, and then run again. 
All right, let's uh, demonstrate. This is my first time coming into this corner. I know, I usually go to the other corner. I used to come to this corner, but get ready. And as soon as you see the screens, do you want to start shooting? Uh, yes, I preemptively fire just to be safe. You can see his health bar at the top there, but... So he's on I the like other to... side taking the other two screens. I like to alternate my fire between the two screens, just so that they both die at the same time. And then you'll see enemies start to spawn, but just ignore them and just take out the screens. Just like that. And then you don't have to worry about the enemies. Just have to do it quickly before everything gets a little crazy. And that's how you beat Jumbotron. When you spawn in this room, when I first started playing, I didn't know this, but there's a stool right here, <laughs> and then you can just use it, smack that lock right off. Now for Isle, some people I've noticed think that the coins are in relation to your like rank, but they're not. The coins are separate. There's an invisible combat rank that you have that determines what rank you get at the end for the items. I just like collecting the treasure. Treasure will get you things in the gift <laughs> shop, so. And that's the only place you can get the black scallywag outfit. And then for stools, you can throw them at the enemies to kill them. And you can holster weapons on your back too, in case you didn't notice. Yes, of course. There's another one. You just block. Wait till they lean backwards, and then you can strike them, and they won't yes, fight back. Yes, when they... it's basically you parrying them, and then you can knock them out right afterwards. They'll just block you yep. forever. And then for here, you don't need to light up this cannon to move into the wall. You can just go straight through the bookshelf. And now we just clear out the rest of the enemies. You can also hit them on the way down because they're not attacking or anything or blocking. So you can just smack them. Now for the next part, it's my favorite because there's frying pans and they're a one hit kill. And they can kill five enemies before falling apart. I got you, broski. Up here, it can get a bit chaotic, especially in the bar fight area. Yes. Then for these guys, you can catch you can catch the jugs. I feel like I'm not qualified to attempt that. I don't recommend using these. They can easily backfire on you, unless you're a pro. They can kill your whole team, yeah. For this part, you have to always be moving because of that jug guy. This is where a lot so of people die. Yes, yeah, so what you can do for the bar fight area is once you trigger the spawns in there, they're just going to keep spawning until you like take out the waves and then it'll spawn the next wave, I'm pretty sure. So all you can do is you can just run back here and then obviously the bottle throwers can't hit you from over there. And then you can easily take care of the sword skeletons too. So you can just wait for them back here if you really want to be careful about it. More jugs. You can catch them. Hide down here and take all those guys out. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come get you. I'm simulating the junior account on the public lobby during this tutorial. Wait for them all to come to me and hear them. My main tip for Isle would be to keep replacing your weapons because the pirates are always dropping new ones and when they get kind of shabby like that, then they're about to break. So try to keep as many swords on you yeah. as possible. Put them on your back, you know, carry two because they're always yeah. getting broken. You can give tips for this level as you go if you want because I know it's a bit chaotic. So for this one, be careful of those guys up there because as long as they start their throwing animation, they'll throw something at you. Yes. So even if you get close to them and they hit the wall with a jug, the jug will still explode and kill you. For the cannon, I would say just use it a bit. Get a feel for it. You can duck behind it if they're trying to shoot you. Because just like in Jumbotron, the enemies in this quest aim for your head as well. So as long as you move your head, it won't hit you. And then for this part, 
I would recommend nobody immediately running to the other side of the boat because they'll get hit. And then these are my favorite weapons. So yeah, so shoot it once, it won't shoot again. You can spin it in the air, then it'll shoot again. Or physically pull this handle <laughs> if you're not good at throwing them. Yes, yes, you can do that too. But there's only two shots in each flint lock, so you have to use it wisely. And also, about this part, if you get too close to the boat or the curtains, it'll kill you. So don't do that. The thing with flint locks, headshots will one shot every enemy in the quest, but it'll take two body shots to get them, so always aim for the head to get the most value for your gun. If you can get good aim with these flint locks, you'll be golden for this whole quest. I think I knew about the headshots thing, but now that I hear it again, it makes sense, and I just did better on that level than I typically do, so shooting yeah aiming for the try head to course. aim for the head they have big fat faces so it's a lot <laughs> easier to hit them how insulting this next part is my least favorite <laughs> in the whole quest i feel yeah, like this it's part is crazy very complicated so i don't know what tips it you have. yeah it can be but um for this one if you really want to take it easy you can spawn them and then just wait back here even if you see them like through the railing because they can't shoot through this i know there's big holes all over it but they can't shoot through it there's also enemies up in the tower which is good to take out them first because that one's a bottle thrower so and there's a little secret area up there there's two ways to get up there the correct way is through this side because they have little platforms for you over here to climb on I have never... So you can show off your epic... What? I didn't know this skills. was a thing. You used to be able to pick these drinks up. And yes. after that update, you can't do it anymore. I would say this is the hardest level in the entire quest, easily. The first part is easy, because you just wait for those guys to throw a bomb at you, and then you yeah. hurl it back at them twice. And it kills them. <laughs> for this part, you can always just spawn them, and then run back here, but... There's just no easy way to put it. You just gotta go in there and kill everything and try not to die in the process. Yes. And then don't stick close together because sword skeletons and then a jug skeleton spawns on top of that bridge. They can take out both of you if you're close enough at the same time. So stay close but not too close. You'll get these two bottle throws first. You're at the end when you're dealing with these guys. You can always take them out with a jug too. It doesn't have to be their bomb. Here's a here's a pro tip. <laughs> oh no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> What's the pro tip? I was gonna say, don't worry about falling. You can't fall between those and other. <laughs> I fell, and that is obviously <laughs> not true at all. <laughs> yeah, you can still fall through them. <laughs> Two more of those, like, bomb skeletons will spawn down here. And you can just take those jugs and just throw them at them. So nothing will spawn when you come right here. The only thing they'll spawn is when you go to, like, that second floating box to, like, that middle island part. And you'll get two skeletons on the right side. And once you take those two out, they'll spawn these skeletons on the left side. Okay. And there's two waves of them up there. And then for this part, you can preemptively kill some skeletons from over here. So you can just walk up here. It'll spawn the bottle and the jug thrower up on top. Oh, I missed. And you, you can take them out from here. Yep, my aim is trash. Good thing they give you like 18 guns to work with. But taking out those two skeletons makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Then you just drop down here. Miss your shots some more. Try to like push this guy over, but it doesn't work sometimes. I 
hate these guys because they're hard to aim. Yeah, they're super far away. I used to think when I was new to this quest <laughs> that you had to take those planks and build something here, but you can literally just run across the edge of it and you don't have to do that at all. So someone who knows the way should always take the torch, if possible, because yes. they can guide the other players. Preferably. Whenever you spawn, just walk straight ahead. That's all I remember. And then you just do some parkour. I always get lost in this level <laughs> because it's dark. Yeah, it's dark. It's easy to forget where you're at. For this part, there's a little secret area that you can go to. Oh yeah, with the mice spots. By climbing up here. And then you jump over here to grab. Okay, well, there's some mice spots up here. I was like a little Easter egg, but you can't do anything to them anymore. They're just chilling. Yes. Like and a literal villain. I don't like my spots anyways, so yes. they can stay up there. The thing about this level <laughs> is that there's not a lot of weapons, so whatever you have from the previous level, try and stock up and bring with you. There's a couple weapons, but not a ton. Yeah. This part's like a little puzzle. I remember when I first came here, I was like, what do I do? Where do I go? I have no idea. If you're skilled enough, <laughs> you can use one box and climb. I'm not, so I always put two boxes there. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. I'm two boxes. And then I know a lot of people do like to climb this way and jump over there, but the easier way is just climb on this box and yes. just hop up. Shortcut. If you are struggling with that part. Then for this, my flintlock just fell through the ground. Amazing. You can put these little boxes over here. And there's like a little physics thing you can mess around with here too. I don't know if you can see me. Yes, I can. And then just climb over here, get these chests. And a free blender bus for your troubles. Yes. I like to save it for the boss level when I'm struggling. And the thing about this part of the level, obviously if you don't have a torch and your teammate's trolling you with the torch, there's like no way you'll really find yourself over here unless you can like pull out your streamer cam camera flashlight while you're playing or something. Mm-hmm. The torch is very important to have, so don't lose it. It is, and also communication. There's a fish or two <laughs> behind there for people that need a weapon. <laughs> yeah. And then no enemy spawn for this part of the level. It's only the second part where they start spawning, and things can get a little hectic. A little maze-like area, but you should find your way out. There's a little chest that spawns in here. Chest spawn right here. And then sometimes the chest spawns right here. Oh. Oh, they spawned already. Just... If you're tall, yeah. you might have to go duck in. IRL if you're guns. in VR on that part. Go in, guns blazing. My guns were blazing and I still died. If and you're then... really in a pickle, you can use the torch as a weapon, though I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> and then there's more of those bomb guys, so. Yeah. There that's like I. the hardest part of this whole level. The enemies yeah. only spawn for this part, and then like in the beginning of the next. Then for here, you get more guns and weapons. And you should use a gun because there's shooters that These spawn on either side. Yeah. Yeah. And there's gonna be more guns and stuff. They won't spawn until you jump on the other side. Okay. I don't even need to try. And then after that's done, there's no more enemies for the rest of the level. For this part, there is a skip. But if you want S rank, I wouldn't recommend it. It's only the later skip that doesn't matter. Now for these mines, get close and back over. I like to just run straight through without stopping. Either way, on the safer side, just run straight through. Don't stop. Yep. You'll hear them beeping. Just keep running. And there's gonna be a lot of spawns right here. Yo. Help. For this part, you're gonna have to find the last two pieces for this puzzle. Wait, how many pieces are just sitting here? Two? Only one piece. So one piece is already in, one piece is on the mat, and the last two are out in the level. <laughs> so just show us where the puzzle pieces are. Of course, of course. Let me detonate these mines as I fall. So your first piece... Ooh, treasure. Uh, Sorry. Know. Got sidetracked. 
It's glitching. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the first piece is going to be right up here. Okay. The last piece will be right here. This guy's holding it. Okay. That's pretty much it. And then you can go up this ladder, but you'll spawn enemies that you don't need to spawn. So what I recommend is going this way. Then you just jump up here, and that's it. And we're at the boss. No, for this part, it can be a bit chaotic, especially when Ghostbeard is firing at you. If you're at a standstill when he fires at you, it'll be a little hard to dodge. You have to keep moving. Sometimes the enemies will aggro as soon as you start this level, and as you can see, there's really nothing protecting you. Yep. So sometimes you or a teammate will just die right off the bat because they'll shoot at you as you enter the level. I grab guns and I go up to the top. I try to kill the cannon guys first because they're annoying and they're random in a sense that like I'm not paying attention and then all of a sudden I'll get hit with a cannon. If you're new, I would recommend just grabbing guns down here and then just firing from down there and hiding behind all the cover that you see around the map and then slowly working your way up. Okay. They're aggroed. <gasps> oh god! That was scary. <laughs> yeah. And that's an example of how they're, right the how they're <laughs> aggroed. <laughs> I'm sketched out. Okay. Whew. <laughs> uh, we can grab our monies too. Yes, I need to grab my monies. And kill that guy and not pick up the jug this time. Here, I can try to demonstrate this time. Okay. And now, just like that, all you have to do is kill the enemy. One strategy I like to do is I have one sword up, and I use the other sword to swing. So that way I always have a sword, and you can just drop one and pick up another. See how my sword's broken? Can't do anything? Just literally turn around, grab another one, and you're golden. Yeah, after a certain point... Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was gonna friendly fire you. Huh? Are you trying to see? No, after I... a certain point, the enemies die. Okay, I dropped a jug, but I was trying to drop it on the enemies, but of course you rushed in and it was gonna drop on your head. <laughs> so I said sorry before I killed you, but then you like swatted it with your sword and it just shattered. <laughs> anyway, I knew you were trying to kill me. <laughs> no, so I, I was swear. like, instinct. <laughs> That's how you that's how you win at aisle. On to the next one. <laughs> yes. So at the beginning of Crescendo, you don't get a whip, you just get random garden tools. For the first half of the first level, you'll use the pitchforks and the shovels. I would recommend the shovels. I think the shovels do more damage than the pitchforks. And then once you get the whip. That's pretty much what you'll be using for the rest of the entirety of the quest, because the whip never breaks. You can use it forever. This is the only quest that you can put something at your side, too, because your whip gets stored at your side. So if you pick up a whip and then you yes. think you lost it, it's probably just at your side. The first level's fairly straightforward. There's not even that many spawns. Yeah, it's just pumpkin skeletons for the most part, with some bats and skeleton maids. The bats... For this game, they're just like Jumbotron and the flying goblins, they aim at your face. So as long as you're strafing from side to side, you won't get hit by them. Yes. And then we'll get more spawns behind us. There should be more shovels. And then the last enemies will be up ahead. And that's pretty much it. After this part, you'll probably never be using a shovel again unless it's for the bats. You also have to be careful when you're opening treasure chests because sometimes there will, there will be... Jugs. Yeah, sometimes a jug can spawn out and if you drop it and your teammates Dead. are just close enough to you, it'll just wipe everybody out and, and now everyone's angry at you. But also, 
guns. There can be guns in the treasure boxes too, so just be cautious. Don't start grabbing everything. Yeah. I like to save these guns a lot for bosses just because they're highly effective. <laughs> or like hordes of enemies, like if someone's in a pinch. Yeah, whenever you're backed into a corner, especially with the bats, like 90% of the time the shotgun will hit all of them. So if you do it just right, you'll notice that it's a red circle or a red sphere instead of a white one like this. Max power. And it deals double damage, and it has twice the radius. There's got to be yeah, kind of an get, art to it. When you start doing it consistently, it's really powerful. This one has a lot of spawns. It's good to get the ones that throw things first, because they're <gasps> highly distracting. That scared me. <laughs> one thing that I tend to do is if I try to get every enemy within like the max power whip range. So if it's too close, I'll jump back and then I'll whip at the bats. So it's a bit easier. Like Makes for me. Sense. Now we go for a carriage ride. They didn't take care of it at least. It's got rips everywhere. I thought Dracula had more class. You would think. This part is easily the hardest part in the entire quest because of how random it is. I disagree because they give you a lot of guns. So there's a as long as you use the guns, I feel like it's not too bad. Yeah, everyone's focused on one side, mm -hmm. and no one's paying attention to the other. You, everyone can die pretty fast. <gasps> oh god, that scared me. <laughs> <laughs> the jump scares are real in this as quest. As soon as you guessed, I immediately turned around. Yes, jump scares are. So for these huntsman rifle guys, the rifle skeletons, a full-powered whip attack will insta-kill them. So that's what I kind of go for when I see them. I try to get that one hit kill, as I can uh, demonstrate right up here. Bye. One shot. <laughs> he flew. Ripperoni pizza. And then if, if nobody knew about this, I'll show it to you guys. There's a gun up here that you can whip down. Oh, hey, cool. we're all loaded. Locked and loaded. <laughs> And then the thing with the wolf barrels, <laughs> when you're not shooting at them. <laughs> if you hit them with anything once, like you can whip them in the face once, they'll get stunned for like a full two seconds and you can just do whatever you want to them. I like to go in with lots of but firepower. Yeah, 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 I saw that. But I wouldn't recommend ignoring them because they charge at you when they do attack and they can definitely scare the crap out of you. And then this is one of the only times I would ever say crossbows are useful. This part I find very now, difficult. For this part, I always struggle with don't this. Don't go to either side of this part because that's where they spawn. You can sit anywhere in the middle, but don't go to the sides. Okay. That's whips at the ready. Be chaotic, but yep, whips at the ready, ready to murder. And mm -hmm. then for this part, don't stay underneath the gate door when it drops, otherwise it will kill you. Yeah, it's important to back away. So every time that you reach the Grand yeah. Hall, it's a checkpoint. It will tell you that it's a checkpoint. Yes, every time you come back, it'll bank all your silver and it'll create a new checkpoint. There will be three separate levels you can go into, but there's two mini bosses in the first two levels and then one mini boss in the last level. So you get like an extra three checkpoints okay. total. And there's some goodies in the in the grand hall, so look around yeah. for chests. Always check all the chests. Try to get those flint locks. They have nine shots. Now for this, you pretty much just deal with the enemies at the, as they come, because they don't spawn in. They're already waiting for us. Mm -hmm. I recommend focusing and then going back for the treasure, but hey. Yes. Do as I say, not as I do. I guess I might as well use my crossbow and see what I can do with that. Oh yeah, and all these things that you see around here with the little candles, you can break for silver, oh, even I the small ones. I forgot about that. It's good to hang on to guns at this level because the boss at the end.
Oh, this bat's annoying me to no end. For the boss, I could show you the strategy I use for when I'm soloing. It really helps out a lot. Once we trigger it, we're just gonna run all the way back to that first room that we got into. Okay. Oh, time to go. Yep. That boss does move pretty fast. Mm-hmm. So the enemies and everything will come back here, or just the boss? Yes, yes, they'll all follow us. You can whip up here, climb up onto the chandelier. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but I need my guns. That's an easy way to deal with the boss. That was pretty easy. Till I died. And once the boss is dealt with, you just take out everything else. And then another fancy trick that I like is since the whips have like an explosive radius as they're coming to you, you can just whip around the corner and it'll damage them. I like admiring the portraits Throw in the this away. one. I always like that. And for this, the spawns are going to be on the bookshelves to the left and right of you. Okay. I don't remember what triggers it. I think we go to the middle and it triggers. Yeah, you can always just whip up here. And then none of the... The only thing that can hit you while you're up here is these uh, projectile bats. Also, another thing is you only have to climb up there to do this. You can just climb up here. Oh, I didn't up, know that. Climb up these boxes and you can just climb up. Oh, did not know. There's secrets in this quest. So right here, you push this little book in, and it opens up this spot to give you some Goodies. amazing items. The whip is my favorite weapon in this quest by far. Mine's but it's this. so finicky if you don't know how to use it. <laughs> then again, I always, <laughs> I always have the wrong favorites, like the AR and Jumbotron. Unpopular opinion. <laughs> yeah. I sure do like these guns. I live for those. And then there's another secret right up here. You got this book, a miserable little book of secrets. And then it opens up this little area. Oh, cool. With more chests. And flying silver. And then for this part, you don't even have to kill the enemies. You can just hit the book, but I wouldn't recommend that. Because and then, you lose your opportunity for S rank. Not specifically. It would just make things a little harder if you just went straight to the boss room with a whole room of mobs chasing you down. Oh, so it's not going to eliminate anything. It's just going to cause them to chase yeah, you in the next room. Yeah, they'll still oh. spawn. But, yeah. So for this one, I think it's this book you need to push. Yep, gate unlocked. Now time to run over here. I didn't run fast enough. Is there a threshold they can't cross? Or are they just going to be bottlenecked in here? No, they'll still come over. It just makes things easier because they have to filter in over here. You do get the enemies that spawn over here, but since everything has to come to you, it makes things a whole lot easier. Don't forget the Huntsman people, because <laughs> they spawn on the right. Yes, yes. Does the crossbow get infinite shots? No, it has like 17 or something like that. It's an arbitrary number. Got everything. Watch me whip. Watch me nay nay. Now for this part, when I'm soloing it too, I like to spawn the enemies in the room and then run away. But run to a point where the boss can't shoot you because it would suck to get hit by a stray bullet. Yes. Because he's not going to miss if he aims at you. So I'll just spawn the enemies by running into the middle. And then now I run. Are we running out of the room? Or are we just running? Yeah, run over here. Yeah, I run over here. And then I just sit back here, and I just go to town with the whip. Oh, I guess because that pillar kind of blocks the boss. Oh, no, he's over there now. He's traveling. Yes. Oh, he's moving. Yes. As long as you're out of his sight and hiding, you'll be fine. I don't think he leaves from that platform up there either. Oh, no, he does. I've never seen him do that before. He's oh. extra eager to kill us today. Sir shoots a lot. Yep. Now you just smack him until he shoots, and I hide behind the thing. And back to hitting him. I'm hoping there's no more enemies that are 
around us. So, now that you mentioned that, as soon as you pass this little threshold right up here, it'll spawn more enemies as such. Go. So we have another checkpoint. Chance to <laughs> stock up on we weapons. Get. Yes. They'll, the chest will respawn every time you come back here. So take a look around. On to the second part of the two mini bosses. For this one, basically, you just want to sweep through the initial like five enemies you'll get. Where'd you go? Right uh, here. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so the pumpkin skeletons and some rifle skeletons will be up there. And you just blow through them, go to the end, and just wait there. The bone maids, they won't attack you until they see you. But when they see you, since they throw in like a radius, as soon as they see you, even if you're hiding behind something, they'll throw bones over it and hit you with it. So it's important to keep moving if one of those maids sees you. And then also, they got some funny messages on these gravestones. Lost <laughs> yes, tracking. They do. Dead battery, AFK. Isn't this the part where you told me that you prefer to just go all the way across the bridge and wait? Yep. <gasps> to just bottleneck everything towards and just you. Like, really, all this quest comes down to I can't with those is bats. bottlenecking enemies. Yes. Also, if you hit things into the water, they'll die instantly. And be ashamed to look at my footage because I'm hitting everything wrong. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna see us using the whips and they're gonna be like, these guys aren't skilled. Yeah, you're in no position to be giving us advice. Oh. Now for this part, there's gonna be a lot of behind the back spawns once you get past this area. Get good with the whip, and this quest is a lot easier. Get good. Get on my level, son. The bat flew off to Narnia before I could get him. <laughs> yeah. Now, this next part is where the boss spawns. And as long as you run away from him, like, you can walk backwards and walk faster than he does. He's a giant so... pumpkin. Spoiler alert. Yes. If you die to him, you'll be a laughing stock. <laughs> uh, noted. So what I like to do is, I like to just hang out back here and just wait for him to spawn as such. And... Come at me, broski. One eternity later. It's taking a long time because I'm not good with the whip. <laughs> there we go. And if you have a teammate, one person can deal with the enemies while the other deals with the boss. Sensible plan. Because these enemies sure spawn for quite a hot second. Yes, they do. <laughs> but wait, there's more. They just don't stop. <laughs> if yeah. you, if oh, you call now, go. you'll get five more pumpkin spicers for free. It's best to just always gather weapons as you go on here, I would say. And for this part, when you get to the first, like, open area of this level, and you wipe out those enemies, there will be some that will spawn behind you back here, so you have to keep an eye out. This this quest loves to spawn stuff behind you and keep you on your toes. Like any other one, you can always just run to the back and wait for them to come to you. Okay. So yeah, it'll spawn the wolf barrels behind you once you wipe out the initial wave. So remember that, because they will freak you out. Yes, they will. Those barrel dogs always jump scare me. Now for this part, enemies will just be spawning all over these tables on the left and right side. If you can knock them off into the spikes, they'll instantly die. So for this one, you just gotta remember, be wary of the plates lying around so you don't accidentally grab them and okay. die. Just like what I did. You can't really wait for them to come to you on this one, because they'll just be stuck up there. Okay. 
It's around this part when the boss is gonna start spawning. I think it's once we kill like these guys. Oh god. Oh. Oh, that, okay. That answers that question. <laughs> like, can it go through that? Wait, <laughs> he was like chasing after me. That was really creepy. Yeah, yeah. Just watch out for these guys. Ow. I'm a disgrace to this whole operation. I hear the of chittering course. of bats. <laughs> yeah. When you're. One thing to be careful about is if you're standing up here and those bats and huntsmen fall as they're spawning on you, they'll still kill you. If you touch them as they're spawning in, they'll still kill you, so be careful of that. I guess I didn't really give any helpful tips on the bat, did I? All you gotta do is just run outside so you don't have to deal with the bat boss and the enemy spawning in. Yeah, and this will be the second to last checkpoint you'll get in this quest. It's funny because these bags kind of tell you what bosses you're going against. Yes. Wolf Chow for the big wolf. Yes. So for this one, there is a skip to go straight to the boss from here. However, if you want any kind of good S rank items, don't do it because you'll skip out on too many enemies and lose it on too many points. Yes. So if you want the rank, don't do it. If you just want a speed run, then go for it. And it's the second doorway on the right, I believe. So yes. I'm if, starting, you if you glitch through, through here, there, then you can get it. But again, yes. it's a little We're difficult. Here for the rank. Yes. Yeah. And then obviously there will be sometimes there will be chests in these little areas that you can loot. Oh, there's one over here too. Yeah, just loot everything Basically, around the outside. Just take this. Yes. Look for all the weapons you can, because the whip is the only one that can last forever. Then you can come in here. And see our friendly Kevin the Goblin. I don't know who. I don't know which Goblin it is. It's Kevin. But, uh, you can't tell that it's Kevin. Kevin. Very distinct markings. Nah. Now you just keep going down, and there are booby traps down here. You just have to time it. Go right after it shoots. Oh damn. And then so watch out. That was Obviously, close. For teleporters. It's a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Teleporters have this part. Oh no, I got disarmed. Easier, but for, oh, my stuff's right there. <laughs> but for my fellow walkers, it is still possible. Uh, I don't know if I'm in the right spot. Okay, well, it didn't come in yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't like this part at all. It all gives right. me anxiety. And then for this, just avoid the laser beams. They will disarm you. I don't think they kill you. They might. This one's... As far as I know, they just disarm. Annoying, because you have to go in between them, and it always yeah, trips me out. Yeah, gotta get that Gucci timing. This one is the one that always messes me up, because this thing goes way too fast, and it always gets me. And there's go, two, so again, you have to right. sandwich yourself in between them. Now, for this part, this one's easy. You just sit here, wait, jump on the cages, do some epic parkour skills. And then you just jump to the side. Then this is where the enemies actually start spawning. This is this next part. Get the weapons where you can. And then this is where they'll spawn. You'll get enemies from both sides. I always Trigger forget. Them, run away. Oh, I always forget about this. Could I be better at killing things in the dark? Maybe. Oh, treasure. <laughs> These will be the last enemies you see, really, these bone maids before you get to the boss. And they can kill themselves on the axes, as you just heard right now. Oh, wow. Yes, they do. This is when you start to hear ominous and growling, part, but don't worry. It's yes. just a giant barrel dog. It's actually... Yeah, this part, you can just drop down here and go in. Cool. Follow up the stairs... These skeletons weren't having a good time, you can tell. Oh, oh. two flintlocks? <gasps> what? I've never gotten two. Oh my god. Oh my god. I got four flintlocks. <laughs> There's one still one right there. Alright, All right. now we just drop down. Just like inundate the sky with firepower and it'll be fine. Yes. 
Oh, I didn't- Oh, well, that's hard to do in the dark. <laughs> and kind of scary. Oh god. Yeah, with that boss, he'll look like he's targeting one person, and then he'll flip around and go after another. So for him, just always strafe and move around. Don't stop, because then he'll get you. The Grand Hall. And this is our last checkpoint before we get to the boss. So for Dracula, he's a very glitchy boss fight, and that's what makes him very difficult. Because even if you hit him, don't anticipate hitting him. Because sometimes it'll trigger with the mirrors and the laser beams from the mirrors, but it won't count as a hit. You have to do it multiple times, and sometimes it won't even reach full power before hitting him, and then he'll get hit. But once you hit him with the sunlight, he'll split off into a bunch of bats. And if for every bat you kill that isn't Dracula, it'll spawn another enemy. So it's important to find out which bet is Dracula, and the way you can do that is by listening for him, because he'll make noises and he'll like mock you as he's in his bat form. And when you hit him, he'll also make noises, which obviously you're going to hear soon. And then once you hit him enough in his bat form, he'll go back into his regular form, and then you have to hit him with the laser beam again. He's also funny because he'll spawn wherever in that little area. He'll spawn behind you, next to you, in front of you. It can be unfair at times. He'll just get you and you're not paying attention. So you have to like listen for him. Or when you hear him spawn in, look for him. And yeah, just stay on your toes the entire fight. He's so hard to hit, I swear. Just like that. Oh, I actually got something. We got S rank. Did we get S rank? I'm guessing S rank is. Hold on. Let's take a picture together. Yay. Thank you guys for watching the quest tutorial today. If you found it helpful, definitely let me know in the comments and leave a like on the video. It took us around 30 hours to make, including editing and filming, so we would definitely appreciate it. And we will see you guys in the next video. Take care.